Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, we are going to discuss the philosophical thought experiment of if a tree falls in a forest with no one around to hear it, does it make a sound? So I'm going to do, as I mentioned in a previous video, I believe, uh, I did say I was going to cover this uh, topic, I think, and uh, I'm going to actually do a Zen answer to this. But before I do the Zen answer, which will be an answer that's kind of free of concepts, all that sort of stuff. Now, it's not going to be a completely Zen answer because I've premeditated it, so it's not necessarily a Zen answer in terms of the spontaneity and non-deliberating mind uh, sense of Zen. But it is going to be a Zen answer in the sense of if a Zen master were posed this question, they may answer in such a way as I'm going to. So before we do that, I'm going to discuss the maybe the intellectual side to this question or very loosely discuss the intellectual side. I'm not going to get into like crazy science um, around it or anything like that. But we'll just go on this kind of basic level of uh, how maybe... An intellectual, an intellectual would actually approach this question, or even just someone uh, who's simply like myself, like an armchair philosopher, how they might de debate this question. So, of course, if no one's around to hear the sound, does it does it actually make a sound? Really, for me, this uh, comes along the lines of what what do you define a sound? So. For example, someone who defines a sound as just something that gives off, let's say, a sound wave or something like that, um, before it even actually enters the ear of an individual who could then obviously perceive it as sound or hear it as sound, um, but as to an individual who simply looks at the definition of sound as, um, you know, once that tree falls, it then has created a sound. They might, they might argue the point of, well, yes, it did create a sound wave. So, yes, there was no one there to actually hear the sound. Um, but, yeah, I think it did make a sound. You could also then argue, or a lot of people would argue, and I think this would be the main argument for most people, would be the fact, basically the reverse of that. Well, no, actually, I define a sound when it actually... Um, is, is heard by someone, is actually enters the ear essentially and is then heard. So in that case the answer would then be no because obviously that tree has fell, it's created a sound wave but that hasn't actually got into someone's ear to be able to say well I heard that sound, I heard a sound. Now the Zen way draws on uh, this this lack of concept so we all, well, maybe not we all know, I don't know, but a lot of people who have looked into spirituality, a lot of people who've looked into a religion, may be aware of this idea, especially Eastern religion, not necessarily Western religion, but Eastern religion, may be aware of this idea of concepts, of the concepts, concepts of humanity. So, for example, a big one is the fact that there are no mistakes in life. That is a complete concept of humanity. You look out at nature with um, a completely clear mind and there is no mistakes in nature. Now, we attribute a stakes, mistakes to nature, and uh, mistakes, if I can even speak, mistakes to nature, in the sense that let's say we see a bird, and I actually saw this the other day, uh, a bird flying and then it's got a, bird, a worm in its mouth and it drops the, the worm. We then would say that bird has made a mistake. But you see, that bird hasn't made a mistake because a mistake is a concept of humanity formed by, obviously, the language that we have in words. So... But actually, in the real world, words don't actually exist. In the natural world, words don't exist. Uh, so, when we realise that fully, we can understand that sound itself is a human concept. So, although sound does exist in terms of the actual hearing of sound, there's no doubt about that. There is some sort of volume there. There's some sort of noise of sound there. But volume, noise, sound... These are words that we are attributing to simply an event that is occurring or, or something that's occurring. So those words are false in themselves. They're just random. You could label it whatever you want. You could label it some gobbledygook language and it wouldn't... The words themselves don't mean anything in relation to the actual thing in which is happening. So then you start to understand, right, well... 
okay, the word sound is meaningless, so we take that out of the equation. So does it make a sound? Well, clearly, no, it doesn't make a sound. But then you start to argue, as I've just done, but yeah, there is actually a sound there. I mean, the sound still exists. It's just we're, we're refusing to call it sound because we now understand that that, a, that word is simply just a, a label or a concept that is essentially meaningless to it, to the actual thing that's going on. So how would like a Zen master approach this question with that being said, with that in mind? Essentially, what they would do, generally a Zen master would look at action, so they would just do action. They wouldn't they wouldn't deliberate in their mind about an answer, they wouldn't um they would be very spontaneous with an answer and it wouldn't necessarily be really quick, but in some circumstances it might be quick. It just it depends. But essentially how a Zen master would answer this question is simply doing something like like that. As in the actual down down to earth reality of what is going on of that sound and it's not a sound in the in the sense of a zen master in the mind of a zen master but that is the reality it's that that is what's happened regardless of whether someone there someone is there to hear it regardless of whether someone isn't there to hear it that is the reality of the situation so you see that zen is this as I talked about in my Zen video, is this piercing down to reality. Now, you might be thinking, well, is this in some way attacking the uh, intellectual mindset or the the um, kind of intellectual way of life? And it couldn't be further from the truth. It's not trying to do that. It's just trying to expand your horizons and essentially give you a different perspective on life or a different look at life. The intellectual answers to the question are perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with describing something as a sound or as this or as that. But it's good to know this other perspective that I feel is slightly more in tune with reality and moves away from this kind of slightly grey area of concepts but concepts and words and things like this are very very useful and I believe I said this as well maybe in the Zen video uh, they're very very useful because it allows us to communicate and to to understand things in a different way that, that without them we couldn't do so so essentially it's not necessarily that that Zen answer is attacking an intellectual viewpoint on the on this question but certainly it's just giving you a fresh perspective and a perspective that is maybe closer to that reality of nature um so yeah essentially that is some of the answers some of the ways you could you could uh, come about this question i'm sure there are other ones but they're just like the ones the main ones for me that revolve around this question. If you've got any of your own personal answers, whether they be intellectual, whether they be non-intellectual, whatever, then uh, yeah, put them down below, share them down below, share may maybe whether there are other, uh, maybe there are other Zen ways of answering this question. Of course, there are a multitude of Zen ways to answer this question. There's not just one action that could be done or one sound to be able to get down to the piercing reality of the question, but uh, there's many different ways, many different actions that someone of good, strong Zen ability could um, obviously answer that question. So yeah, very interesting one that one. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a bit of uh, a different perspective out of it. And uh, with that being said, I will see you in the next one.